Hit it. Now's your chance to go one on one with me, Dan Henderson. Just watch my technique series and catch the clue. You might win a trip to visit me for a one on one training session. This series deals with takedowns. I can't stress enough how important takedowns are. They've been very important for me to achieve takedowns. Uh, and everybody in the fight game needs to learn how to take down. I'm going to be stressing the importance of a double leg. I'm going to break it down so it's real simple and basic to different components. And I'm also going to go over various setups that I use that have done really well for me, as well as a few other takedowns. Hit it! Hello, I got Nathan here again. He's going to help demonstrate a double leg with me. Uh, I'm going to break down the double leg into various components to make it real basic and simple to understand. There's just a few various points that are real important with the double leg that, that most people don't realize. First off, I'm getting our stance here. You always have to change levels first. I can't shoot a double leg from here. Okay, I'm going to be going nosedive right into the ground if I do that. You always want to change levels. Change levels by bending your legs and slightly bend your back right here. Okay. And I always want to leave my hands up a little bit longer. If I reach first, I'm going to get hit on the way in. Try and keep your hands up by your face as, as long as possible. Change levels. Now I'm going to explode off my legs. I'm coiling these springs and I'm just going to explode. And I want to drill them in the stomach with my shoulder, okay? And my back leg comes right up, pretty much even with his legs, okay? Now it's real important that I don't go straight through them. I want to turn the corner, we call it. I want to take my head and push into his body with it. And also, real important features, you got to have your hands down by his legs, on his knees by his calves, okay? You don't want to be above the bend of his knees with your leg, with your hands, okay? Always down low, gives me a lot more leverage, okay? So I'm down low, driving off this leg and pushing with my head. You finish with your shoulder right in his stomach, it helps pin him down, okay? We'll go a little bit quicker on this. Change levels, explode, foot comes up, Let's drive. Okay. Keep them pinned down. It's real important to avoid a choke when you do a double leg. Okay. If I finish going straight through the man, it's real easy for him to get me in a choke, and he's also got me in guard. Okay, and I really want to try and avoid going to guard if I can. So a couple of small points on how to avoid getting to guard. Changing levels, explode, grab here. When I turn the corner, my forearm is going to guide his legs on the other side of mine. Okay, it's real important to keep those legs here. He's going to try and bend his knees and try and get him inside the guard. Keep his legs out. Fill that space with my knees. You'll end up in a nice side position. Now I'm going to break down the double leg a little bit farther. Usually when, when I'm in my fight stance, okay, I'm a normal righty, so I've got my left foot forward a little bit. So what, if I got my left foot forward, that's my lead leg. It's going to step into the middle of my opponent's legs, right between. 
Okay, I don't want to switch and shoot the other way. Okay, if I'm a if I'm a righty and I'm, I'm my stance is this way, I need to learn how to shoot a double leg with this foot in the middle, which means my head is going to be on my opponent's left side. Okay, just like this. I don't want to be out here and switch before I fight. A lot of fighters will pick up on that real quick. Okay, so to break it down, this foot goes right into the middle. Right here. Hands are on his knees or below. Turn the corner by pushing with my head, driving off my foot. My hand guides his legs past my legs right into here. Okay. Climb right up into that side mount. Okay, one more time, a little bit quicker. Now I'm gonna break down a little bit more on how to avoid being choked. Seems to be a common problem a lot with People that are shooting a double leg, they get caught with their head in there and get choked a lot. So basically to avoid that, I need to end up with my head on one side of his body and my legs on the other when we hit the ground. Okay, if he's got, got my head wrapped up tight, I don't want to drive straight through. And I don't, don't want to, I can't put my head or my feet on this side, okay? I need to make sure I end up with my legs on the opposite side of his body as my head, right in here. There's no way he can choke me out when my head's on one side, my body's on the other. Okay? I don't care how, how hard he squeezes, he won't get me choked out. So make sure you finish with your head on one side, your legs on the other side of his body. There's no way he can choke you. Now I'm going to show you a little something that I do when the guy sprawls on me a little bit and that, instead of getting stuck in there, it's something real simple that, that you can do to, to finish your takedown. Okay, I, I shoot in, change my levels, reach for his legs, and he sprawls and he might even turn his hips a little bit toward the other way. Okay, now I want to, I want to, I don't want to be right underneath his, his weight right here. Okay. I want to try and just slide my body out from underneath him a little bit over to the side. Let's go ahead and stand up and start over. Okay. Change levels. He sprawls. Now I'm going to just take my knee and slide it over a little bit. And I'm also going to do the same thing with my shoulder. I'm going to slide it over just a little bit. I just got out from underneath his weight and he's already fallen over. Another key element with that is I need to take his far knee and chop it down. As I move out, I'm going to chop his knee down. Okay, that'll help him fall over for me. Okay, change levels, shoot. He sprawls. Just going to get out from underneath him a little bit, chop his knee, and finish by keeping all your weight on your shoulder and his stomach. Get your knee in there and slide up. Okay, again, change levels, reach with the hand. Okay, now I'm just going to slide my shoulder over a little bit, and my knee, and drive. Another point that I want to stress, when I get in here and I slide over, I'm taking my foot, and we call fishtailing it over. I'm going to turn my foot. So I'm going to slide over and fishtail my foot. Helps me turn the corner a little quicker. Okay, one more time a little quicker. Hit it! Now's your chance to go one-on-one -on -one with me, Dan Henderson. Just watch my technique series and catch the clue.
Now we're going to go into a little bit of the setups to get into that double leg. Okay, I'm going to start off just by avoiding his strikes and falling and changing levels underneath his punches. Okay, so if we're in here and he, sh he punches at me, okay, I don't want to just stand here and shoot from here. Again, that's where changing levels really helps. If he punches, I'm going to change levels right underneath it. But then I'm going to drive in and shoot from there. So I don't want to just change levels and stay here and move backwards. Okay, he might be coming after me hard. It's great when I change levels. Immediately bring my foot up. Hands are down here on his knees. Heads up. Don't have your head down. And again, drive right through him. Try and finish on the side at all times if you can. A lot of times when we're moving around, you kind of can get a feel for when he's going to come after you kind of hard. You kind of just be ready to change levels. And he almost lifts himself up when I get into there nice. He's walking into me, and I really don't have to penetrate that much. I don't have to go after him. Okay? So a lot of times, all I have to do is just change levels. And he's walking into me, right into here. The important thing is not to get hit. Change levels. You also need to be aware, be aware that he can throw a knee. So if he's punching, he might be throwing a knee. So again, don't lead with your head. Change levels. And a lot of times, you might catch a knee in the chest but you don't want to have your head out here. Okay, go ahead. Okay, doesn't do a whole lot when the knee hits you right in this area. Okay. Okay. And again, I want to stress Keep your hands up as long as you can before you reach for his legs. Okay, just in case he might throw a throw a hook in there. I'm changing levels. And if he does throw a hook, I'm here. And then I'm reaching. Okay. And again. So the longer you keep your hands protecting your head, the better it is for you if you throw some wild punches in there. So now we're going to go into getting to that double leg off of your own strikes. Okay, setting up how I'm going to change levels and close that distance from my punches. Okay, so if I'm in this nice boxing stance, if I throw a punch at him, maybe even two, he's usually going to cover up, maybe back up a little bit, maybe even move his head back, leaving his legs wide open. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to follow. I don't want to just throw one punch. If I want to shoot, I have that in my mind. I want to use my punches as a setup. Okay, I need to follow, and I'm going to need to penetrate a lot farther than normal because he's moving backwards. Okay. Okay. So again. Now, if you notice, I really have to make a big step to get to his legs. Okay, and it's real important. I'm changing levels first, punching, changing levels, and coming in. You drive with your head. I bring my knee in. Works even better if you actually land one of your punches. Okay, I won't hurt Nathan too bad. But if I do land one of my punches, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna be moving him back even farther. He might even close his eyes for a second. Okay. When he opens his eyes, I'm already gone. So 
So when you're doing these punches as a setup, actually try and hit them. Don't just throw your hands out there and try and shoot before you try and hit them. Okay, it's important that you really punch, then shoot. Okay, if I'm doing my jab, then my right. Okay, I'm a little bit awkward here. I'm gonna need to bring it back. So I would, I would suggest left, right, left in my case. So I'm a righty, jab, cross, jab, then shoot. Okay, and I might back him up across the whole mat. Okay. Jab, cross, jab. This next move that I'm gonna show is a setup, another setup for the double leg. Call it an arm drag to a double. An arm drag is basically pulling his arm across to there. A lot of times I might just move, move his arm a little bit, okay? And as I do that, I'm going to change levels and attack his legs. Now a lot of times I can't just walk in here and grab his arm and do that. I need to figure out how to get to his arm. Okay, one nice way that I like to do, do that is off of his jab, when he punches, I get this hand up high, I'm going to block here, and I'm going to follow it in a little bit. This hand is still up high until I get ready to move, move his body. Okay, so go ahead, Nathan. Okay, that's about how quick it is. Real quick, make sure you change levels. Okay, now we'll finish all the way through. Again, when he jabs, I don't want to just leave my head here. Even though I'm grabbing his wrist, he's going to bang me in the face if I don't grab it, if I don't move my head. So I want to move my head a little bit as he does that, just a little bit to the side. Now I'm going to follow it in, push his hand down. My other hand stays up high so I don't get hit with the other hand. Now I'm, when I'm ready to go, reach across, grab up on his tricep, change levels as I do it. I let go of his wrist, pull his arm across, change levels. When I get his arm across his body, that's when I let go and grab his legs. Go down to my knee, and usually he'll walk back a little bit. I follow up with my, my rear leg, and now I drop. And almost every time when I get to finish a double leg, my shoulder is pinning him down here. Okay, so he can't move. Now I'm gonna go into a different setup that I use. Uh, when your opponent throws a kick at you, you're either gonna you check the kick or you're gonna take the kick with your leg. Either way, it's a good opportunity to follow his kick when he's moving his leg back into a double leg. Okay. Now I'll demonstrate the first one when he makes contact. I'm gonna fall. Right away I'm changing levels. As his leg's coming back, I'm changing levels and taking that shot. Go ahead. Okay. You have to go right away. If he's already got his leg back and set, it's almost too late to take that shot. Go ahead. Okay. Now, if I do check it, I gotta get my foot down right away. And as that foot's coming down, I'm just gonna go right into changing levels. Right in, leg comes up, drive through with my head. And in all these double legs that I've done, sometimes I stay on my knee after I get in here. Sometimes I stay on my knee to finish. Sometimes I come up my foot just a little bit when I drive. Okay. Depending on how much defense your opponent gives you, you might have to come up to your feet and chase him down a little bit. Okay, I move a lot quicker on my feet. Okay, so again, this setup, I'm gonna check the kick, plant, and change levels at the same time. Grab his legs, drive with my head. Okay.
Well, let's do the, uh, when he makes contact, they'll do it a little quicker too. Just wanted to give you a quick uh, couple of thoughts on strategy. When I'm fighting in a cage or a ring, either way, it might be a good strategy to push him up against the cage or the ring, either from in here or when I make my shot, drive him into the cage a little bit and then finish. He can no longer sprawl on me when he's got his, his hips and his legs up against the cage. He can't put his feet back to sprawl on me. Same in a ring, okay? In a ring, you can actually bounce your opponent a little bit off the, off the ring and it gives you a little, little help, okay? In a cage, it stops him, so you gotta actually pull his legs out from underneath him. I don't really finish the same way in a cage in a ring, or in a ring, okay? If I'm in here, I might have to stand up a little bit, take a big step across first, and pull his legs up a little bit and dump him almost right down below me. So he's not gonna move a whole lot when he's up against the cage or the ring. Okay, so again, if I'm in here, got him up against the cage or the ring, I'm gonna step up and get all his weight on one leg, but then I'm, I'm gonna pull his legs up a little higher and drop him almost straight down. Okay, let me get a little different angle on that. Okay, so if I get him up against the cage, change levels, I want to take a big step so my knee is outside of his leg. Now I'm going to put all of his weight on that leg and lift him up and straight down into the side position. Okay, those are just a couple little strategies that are real helpful when you're fighting in a ring or a cage. The next one we're going to go over, uh, I'm going to set him up for a double leg from this underhook position, okay? Nice little position is this underhook position, you can control your opponent real well. You can get into that, that underhook position a lot of times off that same jab that he throws, grab in here, and instead of going to the arm drag, I can come right into an underhook, okay? Right into here. Let's switch around here. Okay, right into here. Now I've got a couple options here on a, on a double leg. I can almost duck under here and do a double leg with my head on this side, or I can just put my head on the opposite side of this underhook. Okay, I'll do a duck under one first. A duck under one's a little different with your feet. I'm usually in here, I wanna control the far side. I'm gonna step in the middle with my, my outer leg here. Step in, the other one takes a little step back. As I do that, I'm gonna change levels and my head's gonna go right down to his hip, right down here. Now let go of his wrist, go right to his far knee. And now I'm in my double leg finish. Okay, real simple. We'll switch the angle up for you. Okay. I'm in my underhook. Switch my legs, change levels, and I throw this underhook back and over my head, then come down to here. Foot comes up, drive across. Okay. Yeah, now the other under, the other double leg from this underhook. Okay, all I'm going to do. Usually my underhook leg, the leg same side as my underhook, that's usually in already. So I'm just gonna step right in the middle with it, change levels, and I'm gonna put my head on the far hip. Now this back leg's gonna have to step way out and around. When I change levels, my back leg's gonna step, and I'm just gonna drop down to this knee. So I don't wanna step right between his legs. I wanna give myself a little space to drop down to my knee, right into here. Foot comes up, opponent will fall over for you. Okay, I'm right in here. Step out, change levels, 
hands are on his knees and drive with your head. Again, a little bit quicker this time. And I might even circle him a little bit so he steps up with that. Change right here. I'm in good position. Head's not down, head's up and into him. And I'm just going to drive off of this foot. Okay. Let me do the other one a little bit quicker, too. From this underhook, I'm going to switch my legs. Okay. Step in and step back. I'm going to the side. Now I'm going to go into some other takedowns that I like that, that are real effective in the fight game. They're a little bit different. They're not double legs, uh, but they're real effective. First one is off of your opponent's kick. Okay, when he kicks me, I'm going to try and follow it. A lot of times I won't get the leg before it hits the ground, but I'm going to follow it and try and get it almost before it hits the ground. And again, my hands always have to be up while he's kicking. I don't want to reach for that leg while he's kicking. Okay, guy kicks, now I'm going to follow it, get the single leg, change off my move. Okay, go ahead. Follow it. Again, I'll do it a little bit quicker this time. Off of his kick, grab the single leg, drive all the way across and up in the side. It's real important, after I get the single leg, I don't want to reach up to his hip. I want to be down on his knee. If I reach up to his hip, he can hop all the way across the mat. And I'm not going to go anywhere, just using, using up energy. Always want to reach, reach for that knee. And I want to throw it across and walk all the way by him to make sure I end up on the side. Okay, again, a little quicker. After I, uh, after I feel that he's already going down, I'm going to let go of, of this knee, and I'll come up to his body to finish. That's right before he hits the ground. OK, let's get a little different angle so they can see that. OK, go ahead and kick. I just want to stress again how important it is on the finish, to let go of his leg and come up and start controlling his upper body. Okay, again, he kicks me, follow that in. I'm going to drive. My hand goes the other leg. I'm going to drive. When he's about ready to fall, come up right to his body. Okay, and I'm going to control that underhook. My weight is on him. You want to control that position. And that's the position I want to try to get to. Okay, this next one is a pretty neat little takedown that I do right into an arm bar or into a double leg shot. Okay, it's off of his collar tie. When he's got a collar tie up on me, I'm going to yank him right down into an arm bar. Okay. First thing I do is this iron comes over top, and I put my hand palm down right at the bend of his arm. Okay. I don't want it thumb up or down. I want it palm down so my hand, my wrist is flat at the bend of his arm. Okay, my other arm is going to reach up high into his armpit on that tricep right here. Okay, this arm is going to push down and make his forearm tight to my chest. And this one is going to hold it in tight. Okay, and as I do that, I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to bend a little bit over, and it's real uncomfortable in between his arm here. I don't want to turn my chest. I want to stay square, right in line with his shoulder, right here. I'm going to bend him over a little bit. Now I'm going to step back and bend even farther. Okay. And he falls right, right in, setting up my arm bar. I'm going to drop right over his head. My other knee comes right in, nice and tight. 
Let me show you again from a different angle. Again, when I'm in here, I'm usually controlling the far wrist. This arm comes over. My head comes in a little tighter. Now I'm going to let go of his wrist, come to here, bend over him a little bit. Everything's nice and tight. Bend over. And it's not real comfortable for you, Nathan, is it? No. Okay, right here. Now I'm going to step back and walk in a circle to get him to fall over. Okay. Walk right in here, your arm bar. Okay, pinch everything nice and tight. Finish your arm bar. Okay. Again. A little bit of a different angle even. Right here, I'm going to let go, pinch in tight. And I swing him all the way around. Okay, step over his head and pinch, or I can step over with both. Biggest thing is pinching with your thighs right here. Okay, once I get here, I can elevate my hips. Okay. And if I miss that arm bar, if I get him down, I miss the arm bar, I sh you might roll all the way over. I can still, I'm still in great position. I can take his back, I might end up on sides. I can try and choke him. There's lots of things I can do from there. As I got him down and I'm in front, I'm not between his legs and his guard. I found it to be a really good move, especially I'm controlling here. My opponent's pushing on me a little bit. I just hop back and go right into that. Okay. So one more time, a little quicker. All right. Okay. Pushing on him. I'm nice and relaxed with my arm. I'm not holding tight. He's going to be a little weary of something. Okay, pushing a little bit, reach and grab, pull. Right into that arm bar. Okay, now uh, the second part of that. Same move that I just showed, same starting point. A lot of times I might step back and try and do this and the guy doesn't go down, but his arm is still uncomfortable right here. He usually will push away and let go of my collar tie. And that'll set up when he lets go sets up a double leg for me. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here and when he lets go of my, I'm gonna change levels and penetrate. Right here. Okay, foot's up, drive with my head, hands are on the calves. Shoulder in the stomach, finish in a nice side control position. Okay. And again, I'm gonna try the first part first, trying to get him down, okay? If that doesn't work, I'm gonna just let go, okay? And as I do that, I'm gonna change levels right underneath it. Come right into a double leg and drive. Okay. Those are two real, real good techniques that I do that work really great together. Okay, this next technique I'm gonna need a glove for. It's uh, one of the moves that I do a lot to set up a, a big right hand that I've been known for uh, off of a, faking a double leg shot. We've been working on the double leg, so it works real well here. Okay, so in order not to hurt Nathan too bad so we can take more than one take of this, putting on a glove. Okay, and I've done this in a number of fights and it's worked really well for me and it's worked real well for a lot of our fighters. Okay, I've, I've done this against uh, Gilbert Yavell, knocked him right on his, his keister right off, the, right off the bat. I've also done it, uh, Vanderly Silva, among the, probably quite a few other people. Okay, and it works real well. And again, I'm, I'm out here in my fight stance. Sometimes I'll look at the legs a little bit and I'll give a little bit of a fake with my changing my levels, okay? And then I'm just gonna change levels, looking at his legs, and then I come straight up to a right hand. Usually when I change levels, 
the guy's hands drop a little bit to try and be ready to defend my shot. Okay, so I'm going to change, and then I'm going to hit him. Okay, and I'll, I'll hit Nathan a little bit so we get a, a real feel for it. Okay, so I'm right here looking at his legs, change levels, change, and knock him on his butt. Okay, and again, sometimes I might hit him in the chest, head. I want to try and hit him in the, the chin, but Nathan's keeping his chin down where he should be. Okay, looking. Okay, and that's pretty much how it goes. I'll hit him in the chest a couple times too. Okay, and if he doesn't fall down, I can follow right through with a couple left and another combination. Okay, and if and if you're doing this against someone that you know that's better than you standing up, you don't want to stand there and trade punches with, he probably knows that as well. He might think you're going to take him down right off the bat. Okay, so he's going to be a little bit, a little bit more defensive. Doesn't want to get taken down. Get one good shot in. Okay, now especially if I don't knock him down, he's usually going to be coming after me right after I hit him. He might come. It's a great time to change levels and take him down. So they both kind of set up each other. And I'll usually do this almost right at the beginning of a lot of fights. I'll come in, change levels, and pop him one good one. I can't stress enough how important takedowns are, especially the double leg takedown. They've been extremely helpful in my fights. Uh, they're a lot, lot better. Double legs are usually a lot better than single legs, especially to, when you finish, you don't get in, in as bad of trouble. You can stay out of the arm bar, stay out of chokes, especially when you stay in nice and tight and controlled. If you do it right, it'll be a great takedown for you, as well as the other takedowns that I did show. They've all worked real well and helped me a lot in fights. If you at least learn, learn the double leg real well, then it'll make you a much better fighter. Hit it!